All right. I'll let people come in before we get started with this. This is not a stream that I wanted to do on the fly, but you know, because of the intensity of what happened here, some things I, I'll show y'all about this. There's a lot of things actually going on. You know, it, it's, it's it's not good, ladies and gentlemen. It's not good. Like I said, I'll let y'all come on in before I start talking so everybody won't be like, you know, what's going on? What's the deal? What happened? Um, if you're in the chat, everything sound good, press the number one. That way I know what's up with y'all in the chat. All right. Good, good, good. Everybody's there. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, we'll give everybody another minute or two, and then we'll we'll start talking um, about what happened to our sister, Sasha Johnson. You know, one of the, the, the most courageous, one of the most courageous black women I ever met in my life. I had a, the the privilege of getting to talk to and know. And I'm going to say this, the, the second one after her, I'm going to have to discuss that too. Um, because there's some crazy stuff going on right now, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know who Sasha Johnson is, you can look at it on our channel. She's been here a few times. Um, she, she's done interviews. She did a debate with D Dominique Samuels um, here as well. Two polar opposites, um, if you've never seen that. But, um, you know, and I heard that news today, like I said, I'm going to give it about one more minute and I'll get, it, get into my presentation about it. Yeah, it's real out here, ladies and gentlemen, these white supremacists. It's, it's real out here. It is real out here. <laughs> um. They say the UK, well, you know, it's in the UK media. It is. But it's on some trying to insinuate something or trying to do some cover up because in the UK, it's not like America. They don't have no Second Amendment. Okay? Most of their crimes in the UK are knife attacks or just simple assaults or some sort of, you know, weapon, you know, stick, something, whatever else. But it's not no, usually no gun crime in the UK. Um, only the police can have guns, and if you have access to getting guns, it's going to be a lot of red tape. The average criminal do not get guns in the UK. But anyway, um, you know, we, we, we've waited long enough. If everybody come in, you guys have to rewind it and catch up. So today, um, I was tagged on a uh, post on Instagram about our sister, Sasha Johnson. Um, if you don't remember who she is or what she looked like, um, this is Sasha Johnson right here. Um, she's been on our channel um, a few times. Uh, this sister go hard in the paint, you know, for black people. And she is definitely one of the most hated black women in the United Kingdom. Now, you say you get caught, you get uh, four to seven years is illegal. Yes, I understand that. Um, Sasha Johnson, um, not only did, did she go hard in the paint for black people, she's a very, very courageous uh, sister out there. Um, you know, she's a mom. She's an entrepreneur. Um, she has uh, three children as well. You know, her, her lineage goes back to Jamaica. And the first time I saw Sasha, you know, I saw her online, like, like most of y'all. And I said, man, whoever this sister is, is she's she with it, you know, she she just had that that energy that, you know, just very, very courageous. And, and you could tell that she really care about, you know, black people. And I remember the first time that, you know, I, I had reached out to her. It, it took me a little bit to even get in contact with her. But um, I eventually did. And then that's when we had made a discussion. And then Sasha, you know, coming on the show uh, for the first time. And it, like I said, it was, it was cool. She talked to me you know, about how the media over there in the UK was treating her, lying on her, just doing what, what the Mazungu do. You know, that's like I say, they when they breathe in, they lie. Um, calling all kind of names that wasn't even true about her. Um, so, you know, I told her, you know, down the line, I said, listen, don't even go back on the UK media. 
Don't go on BBC. Don't go on Sky News. Don't go on ITV. Don't go on none of that. I say, look, you need a place to speak. You got it. You can come on this platform, spread your message how you want to spread it. You cool with me. They say, you're not going to be harassed over here. No one's going to bother you. It's, it's you. And she was like, you know what? I'm going to start doing that because yeah, I'm tired of them. You know, every time I come on, they're cutting me off, X, Y, Z. And so she got to telling me about a bunch of death threats that she was getting. Um, and I said, really? And what the UK media is not putting out, I'm going to put out. So Sasha, and I had to, I'll read it to you, but I had to redact it so I could show you that uh, Sasha sent me one of the death threats that she had received um, toward the end of the year when, when, you know what, hold, hold, hold on a second, hold on a second, let me, see, 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 you gotta go, I, 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 I can't stand that, you gotta go, anyway, so this is one of the death threats she sent me that's not being played in the UK media right now, so I, I'll uh, read it, because I had to redact it just so I could show y'all, it says, listen up, N-word, you will always be our slave. Don't let me ever catch your sweet N-word and talking about her private part, uh, talking about enslaving anyone. There's a reason we stomp the F out of you N-words. And if you want to bring that kind of game to the board, remember who runs the world. And then they say white Jewish people. It says, so stand down. It says nigglet. Um, and, uh, and start promoting peace because you deaf don't want this war N-word. That's what... Um, the death threat that she sent me. So that's just one of many that the sister would receive um, on a daily basis, you know, coming from these folks in the UK. Now, in order to get a gun in the UK is very, very hard. You can't get a gun like that whatsoever. So what the story is that the sister was out, um, you know, it happened around three in the morning. Somebody ended up shooting the sister in the head. Now, for me, based off of, you know, what we see here, all the threats the sister says she was receiving, that's the first thing I had said to myself. Why wasn't she protected? I'm like, that's a failure. To me, I, I, I'm upset because what are the, the brothers at? What are the brothers at, man? Like, that, this shouldn't even happen at all. You know, listen, y'all about to call me whatever y'all about to call me. I don't care. I'm used to names. But this is why brothers need to be on the front lines and the sisters just need to play assistance. Why isn't the brothers taking the stand? Why isn't we got women putting themselves out on the front line when it should be the brothers putting themselves out there on the front line? And why the brothers weren't protecting that sister like that? If you're going to let her be on the front line, what was the protection at? Y'all knew she was getting death threats. If she sent it to me, I know she was sending it to y'all. You knew good well. Every, them folks are threatening her all over the place. Matter of fact, she was supposed to come back on this show. And she had, I remember the last message she sent me, she had ended up canceling because she said something had came up. I don't know what it was. But let me, let me see if I can read this last message she sent me. If I can, hold on, Sasha. There we go. Okay, she said back in. January, uh, we we'll, we were supposed to do it. Uh, her come back on the show, right? And she had said that I'm so sorry for an emergency has come up. I had to leave the house. A hostile police situation. This goes back on January the third, and, and 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 let me show you because I ain't lying. I don't lie about what I'm putting out. Okay, she said this back then. Okay, a hostile situation. I said, okay, glad you let me know. Be safe, sister. And, and the last thing she sent me was February the 2nd, like some sort of uh, interview. And I haven't really heard from her since February the 2nd. That, that's on uh, WhatsApp. Okay. Um, she also had a very, have a very successful restaurant um, as well. So you're right. There's so many cameras in the U.K., so, so many cameras. You mean to tell me they didn't catch who did it? This just this, this, this my, this my hypothesis, what I think, based off of what I know. 
a lot of high level people in the UK did not like Sasha. They didn't like Sasha at all. They was afraid of her. She told me that dude in the home office, that Indian dude, the one that's in home office, whatever his name is, y'all in the UK, y'all know who that Indian dude is. He was trying to get her blocked from coming to London. And she's a UK citizen. And he was trying to get her being from coming to, to London. Oh, yeah, yeah, open Bob. I, oh, I believe that because where the gun come from? They don't have a Second Amendment in the UK. Citizens can't just go get guns like that. Where the gun come from? Gun crime is not even a, a thing in the UK like that. In most countries in the world, gun crime isn't like the United States. So to hear somebody getting shot in the head like that? Oh, no, 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 no. This is much deeper than just some random crime going on. Now, the white supremacist was upset with her constantly. People in the UK government was upset with her. You you look at what, what happened with Tariq Nasheed. He could put out a documentary and got banned. He couldn't even go. Mr. Farrakhan can't go, can't go to the UK. Matter of fact, the UK got to give Mr. Farrakhan them some money for uh, banning a speech. So y'all have to understand that United Kingdom, that's where these people here come from, Britain. That's where these people come from. That's the motherland of white supremacy is in the UK. Now, in my opinion, based off of all the white supremacist threats that this sister was getting, and she was, she was people in the high ups didn't like her at all. One or two things even happened. Either it's a police that did it, a white supremacist with police ties, or I got to do the number three, or uh, a William O'Neill type, because she told me there's a lot of them over there. She told me that. She said, listen, you think that, that's a problem in America? She said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, America has nothing on the selling out here in the UK. She said that. She said that a lot of black folks used to attack her, too. It wasn't just uh, uh, the white supremacy, because she said that you'll see a lot of dudes in the UK, and those of you in the UK can verify what I'm saying or not, okay? She was saying that there's, like, you all even see black couples in the UK. She said that they all tied up with the Mazungu. She said they don't even be, like, with Indians or Asians. Or somebody like that. And they with somebody else. No, it's always that Mazungu. And they will literally fight you to the death behind that Mazungu. She, she said, listen, it's a certain love over here. You think America is bad. No, you need to see it over here. She said, these people are horrible. She told me that. You understand? And I asked her a question when she would tell me about all the threats that this sister was receiving. I said, well... You, 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 I said, what country are you originally connected from? You know, your people. He said, Jamaica. I said, okay. I said, well, Sasha. I said, considering, you know, your kids, considering your family. I said, you ever thought about connecting back in Jamaica? And like opening up that restaurant and doing different business or even going to the motherland? I said, you have, have you considered some of that? I had told her. And she was like, yeah, you know, that's something I, I thought about, you know, and I definitely want to get connected back in Jamaica. And I said, well, maybe it's something you should really think about. I said, because I said, these devils, I said, I said, y'all numbers are so low in, in, in the UK. I said, in America, we have at least 45 million. You got a little bit more people here in America and we have a Second Amendment. You know what I'm saying? So I said, if you with the Black Panthers here, You'll be armed. You'll be protected with, with that way, right? I said, but over there, you guys don't have it like that. I said, so you definitely got to, I said, these white supremacists coming hard at you. I said, because this is the thing she kept telling me how they, I mean, they wanted this sister gone. And they sprung the attack. So whether it's a William O'Neill type or a white supremacist police or whatever, we know it's deep because Guns are illegal. They don't have gun shops going in to say, oh, I want to go buy a gun. Not, it's not like America. Yes, I understand she was born in the UK, but her, her people are still connected back to Jamaica. I get it. 
So now the sister fighting for her life. I tried to, you know, I, I asked Richard Sudan to see if he could find out any of the information of any of the family, you know, um, that maybe could be watching this. Um, if y'all could, you know, email me or let me know what's going on, what, what we could, what we could, what we can do, um, a, as a people, you know, here, um, let us know. Um, because I know the number that we at least have for Sasha, you know, it's just basically going to, you know, it's not, not being picked up, but yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sasha Johnson, uh, was shot in the head. Um, and like I said, it's all in the, in the UK media, you know, so you can pull it up right on Google. The story is BS. It is totally BS. Well, I'm just telling you that the sister was definitely dealing with a lot of death threats um, from the white supremacists. Hold on. Let me respond to Tanya E. So he said, so let me get this straight. They don't want you speaking up for your rights, but they're okay having all of the one million Caribbean people coming over to rebuild England after World War II. Tanya, that's exactly right. They want you to stay quiet. They want you to stay subjugated. They want you to just go along and get along. Okay. And let me tell you something. You know, they, they try to say in the UK, oh, we're not like America. America is, is uh, uh, so racist. No, <laughs> they are the creators of racism. Do you hear me? They created it. It was born in Britain. Where do you think these people come from? That's over here. Where do you think they come from? Matter of fact, if you know the history, the worst of Britain, the worst of the worst of their white supremacists came over here in droves. We got the worst of the worst over here. You understand? If you know history. The, yes, the Jamaican people with the wind rush, they went over there begging Jamaicans and different Caribbean people after World War II, after it was decimated. It was decimated after World War II. There was no white men to rebuild anything. They went begging Jamaican people and all of that to come rebuild the UK and the United States government gave them the Marshall Plan to rebuild the United Kingdom. So from America to black folks, we're going to rebuild that place. You would think they would have some sort of camaraderie. They would be cool. They would say, you know, hey, man, this wouldn't be where it's at today. It wouldn't be for black people. No. What they were trying to do with the black people from the Caribbean? Kick them out. Trying to say, okay, we, we, we got our, our, we got what we need. Go back to, go back to Jamaica. Now, I talked to uh, Sister Juliet. She hit me up. She didn't know if I knew or not. And um, she said, you heard what happened with Sister uh, Sa Sasha Johnson. And I, I told her, yeah, let me respond real quick to, to, to my wife real quick. And she said that she was getting the same threats before she left the UK. They were threatening her life like that. Okay? But why did that happen? My thing is, why wasn't she protected? Why? Why? They, they have the NOI over there. They do. You know, what, it, what I mean, did... I was just asking questions. Why wasn't she weren't protected? You know, the white supremacist is laughing at, at her. Um, they have on their Facebook page. Let me see if I can get back to that Facebook page. Uh, her her Facebook page right here. They have, you know, you have the emojis where people are laughing. Hello. Let me see. I'm trying to get to it where I can read. These things here. Uh, okay. They, these are the white supremacists. This, this is the laughing emoji about this sister getting getting shot. And look look at all these white supremacists that's laughing. L laughing. You see that? Look, look, look at that. They're they all laughing about it. You're right. All the grassroots Black Lives Matter leaders have been killed or something. Yeah, they, they're 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 laughing. Let me see. Hold on. Pull this up. Hold on. Look. These all these look. All these people laughing about it. I'm showing you. Them idiots sitting up here. I'm just showing you. They they laughing about Sasha getting shot in the head. And you wonder why. 
I say they're, they're devils. Only devils laugh about uh, something like that. That's not nothing cool. That's not nothing cool at all. You say you say documented they scrubbed their pages. Oh 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 oh! People already took the screenshots of, of them. Yeah, is there any trolls? Get get them out of here. Is there, is there any troll? Any trolls? Um, get them out. There's another sister too right now, but it wasn't. Um, that, that it, I'm tripping out. All these different things that's happening. Do you remember Sister Segment? Um. The, the one that was fighting against the white supremacists too right now, that sister is, um, you know, something going on with her and her health. And you remember her sister segment. You remember her. This is her right here. I know you remember this sister right here. I know you remember her. She's fighting for her health right now. I don't know what happened with this sister, but she's fighting for her health. And you know, that sister there, she was, she, she's on it too. Let me tell you something. She's a mother. We're talking about Sasha Johnson with three children. And I know by talking to her, she was about like, man, I died for this. You know what I'm saying? That's just really what how she how she was. It wasn't no because you know me, I'm trying to say, well, let's look at it in a in a bunch of different ways, right? But at the end of the day, she's a mother. She has three children. What about those three children? Now, y'all have to understand that when you step in, stepping into this realm and you starting to get certain threats and things like that, you got to take that seriously. I, I'm not saying she didn't, but you got to take that seriously. If the people around you is, is not protecting you like you need to be protected, why do you think the minister walk around with, with people protecting them like that? The minister is protected like the president. You can't get you can't trust me. I remember when I went to the Million Man March. I never forget this. When a minister was at and he was about to come out, I, I never forget it. The minister had about eight FOI right there. Boy, them dudes look like the minimum 6'2, 250. Swole up too. I mean, they wasn't no no little brothers. I mean, them dudes was in them suits. But boy, I like you wouldn't get in what and you and you try to and you go try to talk to them. They're not going like they not even paying attention to you. They focusing on trying to protect the minister because we know that somebody like the minister is a target. Anytime you get to that level and them folks getting that mad at you on the state level, you got to have that protection. And what I'm upset about right now is that why wasn't that sister protected? There ain't nowhere she could have went in the UK where she didn't really need some protection because, see, the white supremacists like soft targets. You understand? Women and children are soft targets. They're cowards. They're cowards. And what did she do to harm them? Let's talk about that. She fought for her people. What's the harm in that? She fought for what is right. What is the harm in that? These people want to maintain the system of lies, deceit, falsehoods, and half truths. And, 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 and this is this the same spirit that, that's going to uh, these different states and talking about uh, critical race theory. That's the same spirit. Don't want the truth talked about. Don't want the truth confronted. It's the same spirit. They felt they couldn't defeat her on the merit of her argument because they know good and well everything she said was right about them in the UK. They never said she was a liar. They, of course, they lied about her, calling her name, but they never could defeat her on the merits of any argument about the way black people are treated. So what did those cowards do? The same thing they did to Martin Luther King and Mega Evers and anything, anyone else we could think of. They want to kill the freedom fighters that's, that's speaking out. This is why some people, even here, left America. Many of them left America because they knew that if I stay here, my days are numbered. Many went back to the motherland. 
You even look at what happened with Asata Shakur and how those brothers, you know, which that should be a freaking movie on how those brothers got Asata Shakur to Cuba. If you look and read that story, that should be a freaking movie. That would be a great movie. But they don't want to show no black men and all their masculinity protecting, you know, a freedom fighter sister and getting her to safety. They never want to talk about those stories. They, they want to show you twerking, twerking your bussy somewhere. They want to show Lil Nas X as a representation of black men, not black men that did things like that. Yeah, Amon Ra, you know, and Amon Ra, like I said, I'm glad I got to meet the brother. Amon Ra told me I'm never going back to America. I'm going to die here in Africa. I'm not coming back to that place. He said, I didn't had it. Y'all can keep it. And, you know, y'all talking about citizenship. Amon Ra didn't, didn't, wasn't even a king citizen. He told me the game. Say, look, man, you, if you really want to get away from America like that, you can come here. Your, your visa can expire. They're not about to check for you like that over here. He said, he said, as long as you're not causing trouble and you just live in your life, they're not worrying with you. They're not worrying with you like that. And he's proof of that till, till, he, till he died. You understand? We cannot. I told you this. Fighting, fighting is, is, is what you need to do. But you're dealing with a group of people that, that killing is, 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 is in the DNA. They've been doing it for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Everything they obtained, they've done it through killing. No voting. They'll tell you to vote. They'll tell you to protest peacefully. They'll tell you that. But everything they obtained was to kill them. And this is why, once again, you can't tell them to change. They're not going to change. Nothing is going to change with them. Now, I want to be honest. So I have to be honest. Are all of them doing the same thing? No. I believe there is a, a remnant of them. Who are good. I believe that. But when it comes to a lot of, you know, the white supremacist mindset, it is a culture. We can't talk about it. I've just, just understood it's a culture. It's not it's not just a, oh, why this happened? Or this is like a thing, learn behavior. No, no, this is something that's being taught for hundreds and hundreds of years. Anti-black racism is something that that's been taught, that's been cultivated. You understand? And they want to keep that going. And if, and if it means taking you out to keep it going, that's what they're going to do. Now, I, I understood... You know, I, I hope I hope our sister Sasha, you know, make it and, and make it and be... And, 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 but, you know, you got to understand, for her to get shot in the head, you got to understand, this, that was deep. That was deep. Because, once again, guns aren't plentiful like that for the average citizen to, gra to grab in the UK. Look, 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 the white supremacists are already in the chat talking about you socialists need to understand you're not going to get rid of racism with critical race theory. Oh, we, we know. We, listen, Mr. White Supremacist, thank you for joining. We know. Listen, first of all, critical race theory wasn't is not spearheaded by black folk. That's your people. That's the, that's, that's white liberals doing that. That's not us. Because we, we, we're not trying to teach you anything. I understand it's, it's in your it's, it's your white supremacy is your culture. I understand it now. I understand it. It's when you're doing something for hundreds and hundreds of years, and and, and, and when your movements haven't changed from uh, 2021 to 1921 to 1821 to 1721 to 1621, when you keep doing the same thing all the way to now, it's a culture. So I'm not trying to change you. That's your people that's trying to change you, not me. I understand that you want to maintain. 
that 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 the culture that you have built. I get it. I understand that you have an anti-black racist culture that don't like people like me. And you would do anything you can to keep it going. I get it. Oh, I get it. That's why I said that based off of that culture, that the only thing that we only reason we can kind of coexist is either we're gonna have to separate ourselves or expatriate ourselves. That's that that's only a black people could do for their safety. Understand? I'm talking about the safety of black people. Now, the plantation Jubilee Negroes, they you know, they, they're yours, okay? They I mean, you have cultivated them, they love you, and that's no problem. But I'm talking about the black people who are not plantation Jubilee Negroes, who understand that they have to be safe. So safety is is is, is what we need to pursue, whether it's a separation or expatriation. And really, at the end of the day, I think expatriation is the best, you know, but if you're going to be here, then try to get to the point of separation. Understand? You know, Mr. Farrakhan had a message. Go look for it. I think it's on YouTube called Separation or Death. He said it. And and I, when he did made that speech uh, that that video that uh message I'm like oh okay you know but now I'm, I'm just I'm just seeing that the minister been talking about that the honorable Elijah Muhammad been talking about that Marcus Garvey told us the same thing and he's saying ladies go back to the continent that's what he was saying like no matter no matter what like it, it, it's like let's just keep it real. No matter what you say, you don't want us around you like that. You you do not. Listen, I go to your white supremacist message boards. I know how you think. One thing a white supremacist said in a, in a white supremacist forum I went to one time, he said, when we come to an area, we come to an area to take over. We don't come to try to uh, coexist. This is why they gentrify everything. When you see them start coming in your neighborhood, they're not trying to just live with you and just get along with you. No, this is when you see the, the, the little the little uh, white woman running around three, four o'clock in the morning, bowl with it, with a dog, and you see Starbucks all of a sudden erecting your neighborhood that you never saw Starbucks before. They come to get you out. It's the it's the colonizing mentality. Y'all call it gentrification. That's colonization. I'm gonna come take over your stuff. Not I'm gonna go buy this piece of land and kind of develop stuff. No, I don't, I see your stuff. I'm coming taking yours. And, and they taught that, that that mentality. Now, now you know, because because they talk about how the Chinese are the co copy and paste, you know, society, right? So even the Chinese is literally copying and pasting that same thing in the continent of Africa. The only difference with the continent of Africa is there's always one difference. When, it, when the people get tired and turned up, yeah, it's going to be something. Just like what happened in the Gambia not too long ago when the Chinese tried to go over there doing the people wrong. And what ended up happening? They burned the whole place down and ran them out of there. So that's the only difference. The government can sell you out for so long for the people to say, we're going to burn this whole thing down over here. We let you do anything. You understand? So they feel they want to keep it going. Say so we need to protect ourselves. He's show we are staying. He was another place that we have a right to second. Well, you know, they don't have a second amendment in the UK. We have that here. I don't know who shot the sister. I don't know who's saying that. Nobody knows who shot him. I'm just saying the possibility. Don't don't be surprised. Like I said, if like I said, the way they're hiding it. Oh, I know the police are in on it. The way it's being covered in the media over there in the UK. It's the same old, same old. When, when things are things are happening, um, you know, like I said, the white supremacists are the same everywhere. You understand me? They are the same everywhere. I don't care if they have a different language. I don't care if they have a different uh, uh, accent. The white supremacists are the same. Everywhere.
Now, I want the sister, I definitely want to hope the sister, you know, like I said, I, I want the family to reach out. What could what could be done? You know, she got kids. Who's watching the kids? What what's what's going on? I, I know about the Sierra Leone situation that uh Juan Gale um covered. I look at that, I always look at those stories in two ways. You can get up, we can get upset, and I'm upset about that, okay? But are you going over there? And laying a stake to your claim to lands and telling them, I want this little section of the beach right here. And this is what I'm going to do with that beach. I'm going to build this. I'm going to build that. That's the only thing. It's, 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 it's easy to sit here and tell them not to do something, but we're not going over there and getting together as a people and saying, hey, we're going to do this and do this and do this and bring this kind of business or bring this kind of resources to Sierra Leone. If we're not going to go over there and do it, we're going to keep getting pissed off. We have a lot of skilled black people right here in America that can go to the continent and make a world of a difference. A world of a difference. And unlike other immigrants that come to this country, we don't have to go over there and, and try to just take and take and take. We can go and, and, and not only get things, but also build at the same time and provide jobs. The main complaint what a lot of people have with people coming over here is that they want to come take all the resources and they don't want to give nothing back. For instance, they come here and build all their little wealth and then they don't even want to give jobs to the people in the communities. They put these stores in the black communities, they don't want to give a single job. But yet they want black people to, 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 to buy everything. They want black people to provide a good life for them, but they don't want to reciprocate by jobs. You understand? Yes, Dr. Ari kind of talked about that, you know. Um, I think, you know, seeing this, and, and some of our brothers and sisters in the UK that could be possibly going to watch this stream, you need to start thinking about getting connected back to your Caribbean roots and going back home to the Caribbean or getting connected back to go getting connected to the, to, to the motherland. Y'all actually have easier access to the motherland than we do. Well, a lot of them flights from the UK is what five, six hours, if that, to fly to the continent. We gotta fly a freaking depends on where where we going on the continent, but we gotta fly hours upon hours to to get over there. And y'all have direct access. A lot of you are Caribbean, Nigerian, different African um, countries that they go over there to the UK. Why are y'all going over there? Why are you being subjected to that racism that's over there? Look at what they've done to Sasha Johnson. If they've done that to Sasha, you think they won't do that to you? And then I know you can get this. You want to be on, the, you know, you want to be a plantation Jubilee Negro and like, well, I'm, just, I'm not going to say nothing like Sasha did. I'm going to go along to get along. So you basically going to live like a slave then. For what? For what? That's not a life to be subjugated. I understand the African continent got their problems. Yes, they do. But it's better to deal with some problems than deal with that. Look at Gina from uh, uh, African Superstar. Gina. She was in the UK for some years. Gina got her money up and everything. What, happened, what did Gina do? Gina left the UK. And Gina's down in, in, in uh, Accra now. She's in Ghana. Now, Gina is, is from Ohio. But she was see her heart. She was thought about it that she wanted to go get some money in the UK because the British pound is higher than the dollar. So then when she would go down to uh, Ghana, she would be doing good. And and Gina did that. And I respect uh, Gina all day long for that. Some of y'all want to leave your con uh, the continent and go parlay in the UK and think you didn't made it. Or you come over here to America and you think you didn't made it. You didn't make it coming over here. And look, look, we have we having a we having a conversation and, and see see and that's another thing. The white supremacists can't stay away from the conversations. They can't stay away from it. 
I'm not telling you to go live around them. I'm not telling you to go bother them. I'm not telling you anything. I, the, the, the message I'm telling you is this is how the white supremacist responds to black folks talking about what's right and freedom and justice. Why do we want to continue to live around that? I really believe they need to have what they want. One thing Amar Ra told me when, when I told him, I said, what about the people that say we built America or built the UK? He said, you built Africa too. He said, you continue to build it. You, he said, easier for you to build over here than it is over there. Every time you build something here, they come trying to trying to undermine it. Look at Harlem right now. I remember when I went to Harlem a few years ago. Harlem was was definitely black, you know that. And I saw them folks, you know, around just running around with their little dogs, and and, and so I went hollering the brothers on 125th Street. I said, "Hey, man!" I said, what, "What's up? What's up with I see Becky running around here?" You know. And they're like, man, they said, we ain't liking that. And I say, well, what happened? They said, man, this place is just straight, you know, all black all day long. And all of a sudden, you start seeing them show up. All of a sudden, the trash started getting picked up earlier than, you know, early. Get Everything getting cleaned up. And all of a sudden, they start moving in here. And then all of a sudden, he said the problems start, you know, with the racism and things like that. And he said, now that more and more of them are showing up. And, and the people you know, was sad about that. They said, this is not looking like Harlem anymore. Once again, they're not coming over there to live with you. They're coming over to take it over. It's the colonizer mentality. I don't like the term gentrification. It's colonization. They're colonizing your neighborhood. They're colonizing your area. It's not gentrification. That's a pretty word for colonizing. That's right. They say you, we live here and don't own anything. It's easier to own things on a continent than it is here. But if you're gonna be here and want to be, I guess find somewhere you can go. But the, but but you know the bad part about that, even you find somewhere to go, and you can get land, you can get this, you can get that, and that's fine. But how do you enforce the separation, you know, to a point? How do you enforce it? They they can just change and make a law and change your stuff up. You say Bill Clinton opened up his office on 125th Street. He said, he said that's when you know, you know, the Mzungu started moving to Harlem. Hmm. Yeah. 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 You see, I'll price you out your neighborhood. That's colonization. That Listen, back in the day, what they used to do is show up with um, with guns and mobs. Well, they figure out that's not going to be, that's not the way to do it. We got to do it economically. So what they start doing is like raising the prices up on you, raising the taxes up, you know, and that's it. And that's how they get you out. But they put you in a financial position where you can't compete. Then this is the bad part. We got all these freaking athletes and actors and all these different people signing $100 million, $200 million contracts. Where the money go? See, let's just, let's just talk about that for a minute. Where does the money go? You can only buy so many cars, bro. You can only wear so many clothes. You can only buy so many houses. There's only so many vacations you could take. Even if you buy a private jet, okay. Where's the money going, man? Like, what's the point of me getting $200 million and my people can't benefit off of it at all? You know, like, how many skyscrapers, you know, LeBron James own? He got the money to build them. You know what he want to do? Did you, you say you talk about a black town, but do you own every building in that town? Do you own the downtown district? Do, do you own uh, all the, the prime real estate? Do you own the shopping centers? That's the key. It's not a black town if you don't own anything. 
it, it, it's weird. It's like our brothers and sisters get so much money. And it's like they. It's like I don't know what it is, and I, I need to find out, and, and maybe eventually I will. Like what holds them back from doing that? Because I don't believe all of them just so selfish like that where they don't want to do anything. But what holds them back? What are they being told? What have they seen? You know what I'm saying? Like, why can't they really help the people like talking about? Because they, they could change the lives of people with a little to nothing. A little to nothing. Yeah, some of the athletes go broke, but not all. A lot of black people are moving to the South, though. A lot of them are. And, you know, individualism is actually a part of the white supremacist culture. Individualism. African culture, Caribbean culture is, like you said, collectivism. We, we are, like to say, it takes a village to raise a child. That's, that is African. That is Caribbean. That's, you know, our, our uh, people. This individualism, I, I don't, I don't, you know, it's, I'm not worried about him. I'm only worrying about myself. You know, that that's them. You understand? That that comes from the white supremacist. That's not us. Matter of fact, if you go back to segregation, we had more of a um, African way of thinking of working as a collective. That's why the civil rights movement was started to took off because everybody was in it collectively but what's hard now is that when everybody's so individualistic and you have the corruption that comes in with the money because you know because black folks instead of them being smart and on code like even with the black lives matter thing how is it i'm gonna sit up here and let these folks come in to anything that we got going on it's just not gonna happen they get in they start finessing the money now they get 90 million dollars and these folks like like where the money go and then everybody talking about Patrice Colors, in which, yes, that's something to be talked about. But that's all what, the money that she was getting is only this much. Where's the rest of it? You talk about Patrice Colors. Where, where's, the, where's them folks that I showed on here, the Tide Center? How much money they got? And, and it's on purpose. Let me tell you something else. It's on purpose. They pushed black women to the forefront. Oh, this, this this woman's the backbone of the black community. Oh, let's, let's push black women above black men because they know that if the black man stands in his rightful place as a true masculine black man, and the man is is the is the head, the man is the forefront, and and, and the women you know help with that, and he's he's the, the 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 one that they should go through. They don't like that. All the prominent people in quote unquote Black Lives Matter is women. Well, where's the men? No, the men they want to show is little Nas X. That's that's the men they want to show. A great attack. You have to understand the attack on the black male masculinity is done by design. They are not attacking the masculinity of no other race of man but the black man. That's why they, they celebrate like like you like look a black boy can't get no attention for nothing good. But he put on the freaking dress. Oh my god. Let's put him on the cover of Time magazine. He's awesome. They're not attacking Asian men and Asian male masculinity. They're not pushing that on Asian men. They're not pushing it on Arab men. They're not pushing, you know, and trying to feminize the Hispanic man. The Native American man. They're not doing that. That is by design what they're doing to the black man. All our, our relationship that we have together is done by design to weaken us as a people. There was a video I, I, I saw today. I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that. The video I saw today. It's ridiculous. Let me, let me, let me show y'all this video. This, this, this is, I mean, our, our people are so warped and screwed up right now. Let's see if I can show y'all this video. Uh... 
hold on, let me see if I can get off of, if I can take this off of, uh, man, I wish I could show this and y'all could, uh, well, I don't have to play the thing. Okay, have y'all saw this video? This woman is getting on her, her knee and proposing to a man, and you got a grown black man sitting up here. <laughs> I mean, look at that image. What the hell, man? This comes from the white supremacist screwing our people up. I feel sorry for, for, for both of them, actually. I feel sorry. And you got people in our community. Let me, let me back this up. You got people in our community think this okay. Look at the people in the background. Look, look, look at it. Look at that. They, they, look, look at that. Look, I want you to look and think that's okay. This is not okay. This is not okay. I don't care if it's, I don't care. Listen, I don't care if it's an old video, new video. That's not okay. Ain't no woman supposed to be getting on her knee to no man talking about marrying her. No woman's supposed to be doing that. None. A woman getting on her knee before you asking you to marry her, she didn't literally took your scrotum from you. She took your testicles from you, bruh. You're neutered at that point. And he's and he got a bunch of feminine energy that's just 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 standing there. Feminine energy. But uh, but but understand. Notice other races of men are not dealing with that issue is because they have been pushing this stuff on the black man. And Dr. Francis Cress Welsey told y'all that was gonna happen. She told you. She told you. She told you. That's just a, everything she said came true. Go back to our sister Sasha Johnson. Strong sister, but she shouldn't she shouldn't have been she she shouldn't have been the, the one just taking all the slings and arrows. That's what the black man is supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be taking the slings and arrows. There are sisters like her step up because some of our brothers not doing it. Man, I ain't trying to do all that, man. Shoot. I ain't trying to have them problems. Then you want to get mad and, and say, well, some of these women are masculine. Well, because you, you, because you feminine, some of you. Who else going to step up? That's what bothers me about the Sasha Johnson situation. I ain't getting involved. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. Y'all pro-blacks. I don't even use the term pro-black. I told you, I think that's a silly term. Everyone in their mind, even animals know that you should be for yourself. Why, why that has to be even a term? Self-preservation is part of human nature. Self-preservation. I mean, we. I mean, we are the only group of people that say it's it's wrong to be a quote unquote pro black. It's wrong. That's a problem. I don't like that. Every other group is pro them. You see, pro Asian. You see, pro white. You see, pro Hispanic. Pro Arab. Pro Native American. You see, pro and they move like that too. They show in their actions that they're pro them. They're not trying to uh, connect with you. They're trying to build their economies. They're trying to do what they got to do because they think about their community. And I have no issue with none of them doing that. I'm not against any of them doing it. Not whatsoever. But if someone even talked that way about building an economy, talked that way about standing up for the community, oh, well, uh, oh, you just being pro-black. Oh, you, I don't like you pro-blacks. <laughs> well, who are you trying to preserve then? If you don't like quote-unquote pro-blacks, who are you trying to preserve? Who? Somebody else? I always tell people, instead of using the term pro-black, let your actions be that way. That's the only thing I say about it. You can wear all the whatever you want to wear. That don't mean that you're for the community like that.
And you're talking about, you know, oh, we, these women are this, and we need to correct these women. Man, look, any man that, that, that know what he got going on, no, I ain't, ain't my job to be correcting no women. It's my job as a man to establish myself. It's my job as a man to build and set up institutions. And trust me, once I set up institutions and start providing jobs and, and making moves in the community, my respect will come. <laughs> I ain't got to do all that. See, men, men that's, that's busy they don't have time for that. I'm not about to waste my time talking about no women all day. It's just it's something I just don't, I never believed in anyway. I believe in building something. Some people do suffer from self-hate. I get it. I get it. But that's part of those plantations you believe are uh, black folk. You got time for that. If you're not quote unquote pro-black or self-preservation, which in this country you're pro-white. I'm gonna say that much. If if you if you're not quote unquote pro-black, then you're pro-white. That's that's the only way you're gonna be in this country. So make a choice. Either you're gonna choose the self-preservation of your own community, or you're gonna choose the self-preservation of white people. That's about where you go in this country, that's about where you're gonna go. That's all the choices you have. Preserve black people, preserve white people. Make a choice. There's no middle ground. You can either choose one or the other, and your actions gonna say so. That's what we need to stop with. All that that terminology, either you're gonna preserve your community or you're gonna preserve white the white supremacist white supremacists. That's just bottom line. If you're angry and say, I don't like them pro-blacks, okay, well, you let me know that you're part of the pro-white community. I got it. I got it. I got it. Cause what one thing that people aren't doing in the pro-white community, they don't say, Oh, I can't stand. And pro whites. Oh, I can't stand them pro whites. You know, you know, we get with them saying that. Oh, them pro whites get on my nerves. They don't say that. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard that terminology from from from? The white folks saying they can't stand pro whites, or they don't no, notice the white supremacists do all the stuff they're doing. You notice how quiet they, they community are when they out there doing that. You notice that they quiet about it, or they be pull you to the side of a job like, you know, I don't really agree with the Proud Boys, you know. They they like they tell you on the side like I like you know they don't but they never say it out there publicly they don't agree with the Power Boys never publicly, but they'll tell you on the side I don't really like you know Trump and how he's doing things and then and then when it's time to go vote vote Trump <laughs> I understand the game I I understand it hundred percent I get it I get it they want to preserve white supremacy and they may not agree with the Proud Boys methods. But they understand that what they're doing is to maintain white supremacy, and that's what they're for. Oh, you! Oh, now you're bringing up Kwame Brown and Charlemagne. Um, Kwame Brown. Let's talk about Kwame Brown here for a minute. Kwame Brown is giving them that work. I like that. I like to see a brother that's um, speaking with masculinity. I like a brother that's not taking no crap from none of them and don't care. I like that he's calling out uh, the Plantation Jubilee Negroes. Um, Stephen A. Smith. I, let me tell you something about Stephen A. Smith. I can't watch Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith is the king of the Plantation Jubilee Negroes. First and foremost, why are you hollering all the time? Listen, Stephen A. Smith sounds like a, a minstrel show. It's not about sport. He gets so excited, all that screaming and yelling. He's paid all that money to put on a minstrel show on ESPN. You ain't got to do all that screaming and howling all the time. And he, he got all this mouth for a black athlete, but he never say nothing when it came to Ben Roethlisberger, when it came to that rape case. Where his mouth at was about then. Anytime something happened to a white athlete, what happened to that, uh, uh what's his name? Chad, um, what was his name? The one that beat that sister, that was with the sea, that dude that was with the Seahawks, beat almost killed that sister. Where was he screaming and yelling and going in for, for for days upon days upon days upon days about him beating a black woman? He mentioned, you know, because it's going to be plantation 
Negro. Well, he mentioned it this time. No, no, no. The way he go in on black athletes. Kwame Brown said he's paid, and, and all the mothers are paid to go in on black athletes. Trying to, try to put their name on Chad Wheeler, thank you. Well, why isn't he on top of Ray Rice? Yeah, he went in on Ray Rice all day long. Why he got to scream and yell like that all day? He, 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 that's why he's there. He, he put on a minstrel show for them folks. It was a dog on messed up hairline. You need to cut that hair off his head. His hairline way back here, bro. Your hair leaving you, bro. Even your hairline don't like you. All that 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 cooning you're doing on ESPN. Your hairline say, man, I'm trying to get away from this dude. That's why I'm trying to run back here, holding on to that hairline. Cut that mess off your head, bro. It's looking bad by now. You ain't figured that out. You know he he's calling out Charlemagne. Now Charlemagne made himself look real. Real bad when you son brother that cease and desist. That he made himself look real bad at doing that. Now, because you send that brother that cease and desist, now he has to come out and talk about you a little more. He took a plea deal. Now, in this time of me too, right? And canceling brothers, how is it that he didn't get canceled? Because black men are boy, black men barely do anything wrong. Black men breathe wrong, and we lose our job. That's a question he's asking. How is it that you ain't lost yours? How is it that you up there? Another one that need to be going off that breakfast club too is DJ Envy. DJ Envy, man. When 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 when, when did y'all see that episode? Uh, I think it, the episode Umar was on there last time, and and, and DJ Envy started off saying, "Well, I, you know, I know it's gonna sound like I'm cooning, but uh, you know, the police was right for shooting Makaya Bryant." Let me tell y'all something. Out of the about 10 years that I've been doing this, I have never, 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 never heard any white people justify the murder of somebody white by the hands of somebody black. Never. Never. He's on national syndicated radio co-signing a race soldier killing a, a, a young girl. But you're supposed to be for the people. Understand, iHeart is a Mazungu-owned company. That's not a black company. If them folks got you in certain positions, either you're questionable or they got something on you where you're going to stay in line. That's why the only way you scale up with them folks. They got to have something on you or something questionable about you where they know, hey, 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 you got a line now. You know, I, I expose you. Do what we tell you do now. And Kwame Brown is just, just putting them out there. And shout out to brother for doing that. The one thing he talked about which was true, I knew this happened, was when, when, you, when all the brothers were skipping the, 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 the college and they were going from, from straight from high school to the NBA. They, oh, they, they didn't like that because brothers was like, you know, you got to say LeBron James came straight from high school. He didn't go play no college ball. And look at LeBron James today. Kobe Bryant came straight from high school. Look what happened with Kobe. Kevin Garnett, straight from high school. Look what happened with him. Just to name a few that came straight out of high school. Oh, they had to put, try to put a stop. They did put a stop to that. The colleges went to David Stern at the time. He was the commissioner of the NBA. And like, hey, man, they got to at least do, you know, three years at a college. Come on, man, we're losing all this money. I mean, look at the money we're losing. You know, they, 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 so they want to use your black sons to make billions of dollars that they're not even giving your black sons. And Kwame Brown is exposing all that. They only the time a black man or a black boy is useful unless you're making money for them. If you're not making money for them, that's it. Black men right now in this country has these people living lavish lives. But, but black men can't live that kind of life. 
And this is why I'm loving what's happening now. Deion Sanders, shout out to Deion Sanders. He, he's coaching at Jackson State University. Football now. Um, a lot of brothers are starting to go to the HBCUs and play sports. Do so y'all realize that these PWIs, which just means predominantly white institutions, if all the brothers would say tomorrow we done and come out of those PWIs and go play ball at the HBCUs, those PWI programs will collapse. Literally, it will collapse. The basketball program will collapse. Football, do you know that black male sports that we participate in pays for just about every other sport they have? Do you realize that, how much money it generates in the billions of dollars? It's so much money these brothers are bringing in. And they fought long and hard about, you know, the brothers getting paid in college. It's getting more popular for the four brothers and sisters to start going to the HBCUs. I'm a big advocate of HBCUs. Don't go there because, listen, when I went to Bethune Cookman, I talked to those students. They said that they the teachers cared about them. They knew it. They felt like they, they could be successful. You know, it wasn't just like them having teachers. It felt like a family. And some of them went to PWIs and said they don't feel like that at all. They feel like just dry and it's a class and, you know, and, and those students say they was happy. So yes, go to the HBCUs, but also HBCUs. Let me talk to you. You need to advertise. A lot of times people don't know you exist. We got a great special going on for advertisement. How do people know you exist if you don't you don't advertise? People don't even know some of you, you, you got HBCUs right there in your state. Like, oh, I didn't know this was even here because you don't advertise. I don't care if you're selling candles uh, to, to selling uh, farmer's market food to HBCU to whatever. If nobody knows you exist, it's going to cut into your money. How kids going to go to the HBCU if they don't know where to go? It's hard to get in contact with people at HBCU a lot of times. Now, some of you some of you that could be watching or connecting with HBCUs. So, so listen to what I'm trying to tell you. I want to go to every HBCU and highlight it. Let's make that happen. You use my, my platform to let people know you exist. So our black children can start going to them. Black banks, let's talk to you for a minute. A lot of times black people don't know you exist either. How are we gonna how are we gonna put money in the black bank so you can do more loans and home loans and business loans and things like that if you don't advertise either? You may say, why people aren't coming in? Because you're not advertising, bruh. Bank of America always advertising. Wells Fargo is always advertising. Black people in business, you gotta advertise, man. You can't you can't sit here and just think everybody gonna find out what you got going on by happenstance. That's not the way the world works. You got to advertise. Black owned airlines, let's say like Ethiopian Airlines, you gotta advertise. Let people know you exist. Yeah, and that's another thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, this is Marisol. Rachel Dolezal is going to the HBCU too. I'm glad you brought that up. African immigrants are showing up at the HBCUs. Indian immigrants are showing up at HBCUs. Why aren't y'all going to the HBCUs? I'm talking about black Americans. Why? That is a no-brainer. I, I saw it like on Facebook... You know, something random show up and show the young lady signing up to go to Prayer View. You know what I'm saying? A&M. Awesome. Our kids' first choice should be the HBCUs. 
you talented track runner, you talented volleyball, football, whatever, go to the HBCU. Bring the talent to the black colleges. These people don't respect you. These people don't, don't treat you right. Why don't you bring it? Listen, when you bring all that talent to the black colleges, all them billions of dollars will be siphoned from those PWIs and go into the black colleges. And then now the black colleges can start getting the nice stadiums and, and getting all the things. Same thing at the, at the PWIs. You know, at one point in time, you couldn't go there to those PWIs to play no sports. But once they're seeing that you bring all this money in, oh, yeah, shoot, we got to let these black players here. Do you think they, they did that because they want to be moral? Do you think they want to integrate Major League Baseball because it, it was a moral thing to do? No, it was a money thing. Even with baseball, some of you brothers, why aren't you playing baseball? Do you know baseball has no salary cap? Why brothers have got away from playing baseball? You can get a $200 million contract easy in Major League Baseball. Way more money you can get played than, and, and, and play a whole lot longer in Major League Baseball than you can in the NFL or the NBA. I think it's quite interesting that the sports that has a lot of black players have a salary cap, like the NFL and the NBA. But the ones that don't have a lot of black players as of now, they used to. We had the Negro Leagues. The Major League Baseball has no salary cap. Look, 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 you got to go. I'm going to block you. You, you. you sit up here and come in my chat and say, don't waste your time to go to a black college. You got to go. You got to go. No, don't waste your time going to a PWI. How about that? Why aren't you saying that? See what I'm talking about? That, that, like I said, yeah, that's these white supremacists coming in here. They're getting threatened by me telling y'all to enroll your kids. And listen, as a parent, you could tell your kids, listen, I would like you to go to this particular college. And, and, and I'm learning from my own experiences, right? Now, of course, your kids are going to make their own choices. I get that. But what you can say as a parent, say, listen, I'll help you all the way if you go to, to HBCU, right? You don't have to go to HBCU. Go whatever college you want to. But you could be like white folks and be like, I'm just not going to help you if you go somewhere else. What? No. I mean, you go to Free Ride Scholarship to a PWIS on you. But if I got to help you pay for it, then I want you to go to HBCU. And you got all my help, you, you won't. Some kids may buck you and say, oh, I'm going to do it anyway. And then they come back and go realize and say, you know what? They were all right. Let me try to do this. We got to start as parents, you know, starting to put our foot down about the HBCUs. We need to see the HBCUs have so much of enrollment of, of students. They be like, wow, we got so many that, man, we, we don't even have space for them no more. You say you say any school that offers a scholar a scholarship. Well, okay, you go to a scholarship and you get the scholarship with some of these schools, but then you're dealing with racism. I rather pay. I rather pay and not deal with racism personally. I'm just being honest with you. Oh, so you go, okay. He said, I wish our kids who are athletes go to HBCUs with their talents. When I saw the football, or the coach tell the football player, he must cut his locks before coming to the school. I was like, what the F? Okay. And when and when a coach say something like that, you expose that coach. You say, let people know who that coach is, and they need to be blasted. But you know what? Deion Sanders is looking for players to go to Jackson State University. Now, Jackson, Mississippi is a black town. You got Alcorn over there in Mississippi. You got Mississippi Valley State. You got, I mean, what you got, uh, little HBCUs, Hampton, Howard, North Carolina, A&T. You got Florida, uh, they say A&M &E -E University. Bethune-Cookman is in Florida. And by Bethune-Cookman, 
if you go to the college of Bethune Cookman, you literally can see Daytona Beach right there. I'm like, I'm surprised all y'all got at Bethune Cookman, so y'all gonna be hanging out at the beach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Morgan State is another one. I mean, you know, you got the ones Louisiana, Grambling, Southern. You know, Xavier is another school. Uh, I think is Xavier HBCU. I think I think the most black doctors come out of there. You got what Dillard. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, you said no football players were drafted by the HBCU this year, and Deion Sanders was hot. He was hot. But you know why? You know why? Because the black players aren't going to the HBCU to bring all the talent there. Okay, bring the talent there. That way, they gonna have to draft, them, or they're not gonna have nobody. You know what I would love to see? The PWI go back to what it used to be. All white players. And the HBCUs be all black players. I love to see that. And let the best one win. Let's see who can win at that point. Slick Insider, I would never tell nobody where to go. I would tell you go to the continent and experience it yourself when you make that decision on your own. You're right. In California, y'all don't have an HBCU. You're 100% right um, about that. Um, but you know what? I'm going to be completely honest with y'all about California, too. I told you this, and I'm going to keep repeating this. California is done for black people. I was just finding out that 80% of the homelessness in, in California is black people. The percentage of black people is lower and lower. You have no political power. If you are smart in California, get your stuff and come to the South where your people are at and, and, and get connected and where you could have, you could build something. Cheaper cost of living, no state tax. Gas is so high in California. Look, you like California? Cool. Go visit California, enjoy the weather, whatever, and, and, and leave. You say white folks, you say, you say white folks want to keep baseball from dominantly white. You say black players are rarely chosen. Well, that's not true because when I was growing up, you know, in this 80s, 90s, you know, you had Michael Jordan was playing, Bo Jackson was playing, um, you had guys like Frank Thomas was playing, uh, what's his name? Uh Ricky Henderson, you know, remember him? He was playing. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. Like, there's a lot of brothers that are playing. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Who are you talking about? These brothers was cold in baseball. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them is a lot of immigrants. There's a lot of Dominicans that playing baseball now. But I'm talking about brothers, black America. Now, I will say this much. Baseball is an expensive sport to play now. And I think that's how they're keeping black people out. It's expensive. You say, what state, in, in my opinion, is the best to move to? I, I can't give you that because you have to come see the different states for yourself. But I would say, me personally, a state that don't have a state tax, which would be Florida, Texas, they don't have a state tax. Um... But, you know, that may not be your speed. You may want to be, you know, you know, lower cost of living, even lower than Texas would be Mississippi. So like Jackson, Mississippi, or maybe, you know, Montgomery or Birmingham, Alabama. You know, I would say go places where black people are dominant. I'm not telling you go move to these states and then you, you black folks are far and few in between. You know, yeah, New Orleans is a black city. You know, a lot of black people are doing good there. Virginia, you know, like, do you, did y'all hear about in uh, Richmond, Virginia, they are uh, close to opening the first black owned casino. Did y'all hear about that? You know, you have um, in Maryland, a lot of black people doing good in Maryland, especially in Prince George's County. Because, you know, a lot, a lot of black people in Virginia, because, you know, Virginia is one of the places, the first place that we landed. Even my family. Um, they landed in Virginia and they ended up going to Louisiana. You say Delaware don't have state tax? Yeah, but Delaware is, is, isn't a, a predominantly black uh, state like that. That's predominantly white. Now, you know, you got cities like Detroit, which is almost 80% black. 
But the issue about Detroit is going to be the weather. I, I don't know. We want to deal with the weather. But if anything, you know, um, you say, okay, you say in Pennsylvania, you got Ch Cheney and Lincoln University. Okay, well, you know, this is my thing. Um, you say cost of living is too expensive in a DMV. Well, like I said, I, I'm in Texas, so you know, cost of living is is not um, is not bad here in, in Texas, and plus they don't have a state tax. Y'all in um, who's Captain Diaspora? Did you know this guy has a biracial job? I don't know who this person is. What are you talking about? Anyway, so, um, yeah. You said that's in Brooklyn? Okay. Well, well, you know. Well, you're not going to escape weather. Uh, weather's going to be there. And winter storms, that's a once in a, that has never happened here. That's not an every uh, year thing. A lot of times we'd be wearing freaking shorts <laughs> in the winter time, so that's definitely a, a once in a lifetime thing. But anyway, like I said, I don't want to keep y'all keep you rambling on. Um, well, what I'm saying is uh, we'll keep keep an eye on what happened with Sasha and everything, and um, I just want to let y'all know that what happened to her. And um, you mentioned Uganda. Shout out to Uganda. You know, shout out to Uganda. Uh, I, I can't wait to go visit Uganda. So shout out to Uganda. Um, oh, you said oh, you tried that. Okay, well that that's that's cool. I'm glad I'm glad you checked that app out. Um, the one the brother uh, came out with. That that's that's cool. That's cool. Um, we'll try to keep keep up with, with, with our sister and find out if she's gonna be okay. If anything you know happens one way or another, we'll try to update. But um, you know, thank y'all for listening, and uh, see you next time.